Madhouse Podcasting Network. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? The last time this last guest was on the show was February 11th, 2021. How do I know that? Because right before this podcast, I looked it up on my YouTube channel. Uh, <laughs> please welcome from Dark Harbor. You've you've uh, known her from and we talked about, but this year she was uh, one of the breakout characters of Carnival because um, there was a lot out there, but she definitely stapled her name into Boardwalk Streets. Please welcome La La Loopsy, a.k.a. Cherry. How you doing? I'm doing so good. My dog is here, as you can see. She might bite me sometimes. She's okay. here. Oh, man. So you got to talk to me about this because uh, we got to talk with you a little bit earlier this year about Dark Harbors. Now, Dark Harbor, unfortunately, did not happen this year, and you had to find a, uh, a new spot for this season to scare, uh, and you were fortunate enough to be casted onto boardwalk streets this season um yeah. as your first year at knots i mean right then and there that has to be a, a big honor to, to get on streets right there i mean yeah no oh, absolutely i was surprised i kind of like because we were doing um we were doing boot camp the queen team and during the summer hoping that queen would go like come back not knowing if it would right um picking it was getting closer and closer to haunt season. Like we weren't hearing anything and people started auditioning for like other haunts. Right. At the time I was kind of indifferent. I was like, I don't really know what's happening. I didn't really take any action on it, but um, out of like a moment of, of just spontaneous energy while I was in South Carolina, I decided to audition in his basement. Uh, <laughs> It was okay. I just sent it in, not really thinking much of it. I, I thought it was going to get mazed because it was like my first year, right? It doesn't really matter. I know in knots, it's much more. You have to like work your way up. Mm -hmm. And that interview, and they were like, yeah, so you got Carnival Streets. I was like, what? <laughs> really? And even when the, the lady was like processing my paper, she was like, oh, you got Streets first year? And I was like, yeah, I have no idea what's happening right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those starstruck moments, man. You just you just kind of roll with it, and you're like, "Wow, okay, I got to give 110 percent every single night then to to show that I belong here." And by God, mm -hmm. you gave 120 percent every single night that I saw you. So, yeah, yeah. it was that mentality. I wanted to I wanted to show another haunt that like Queen had some talent over there, and that like what we were about. And I wanted to like represent my family in, in the best light possible. Yeah, no, hands down. I mean, you had a fantastic season. I got to go to Knott's, I think, five or six times this season. And mm -hmm. every time I saw you, there was always something stepping up new. Um, you know, the first time I saw you, you were, uh, I remember the first night, it was uh, usually for a lot of people. It's about figuring out uh, how you're going to roll with the character out in the streets and how you're going to uh, constantly improve it each week and whatnot and, and add to it. Um, but you having that experience from Queen and whatnot, um, it seemed like you going out there was just a natural fitting. It just, it, it, it felt like it just rolled right out to you. It did. I think it's, it, I think it's cause it's just clown. I think I'm just a clown at heart. <laughs> <laughs> like super, it wasn't like too different than what I normally do, but a lot of people were like, wow, you just seem naturally at home. And, um, I was like, I just, I loved, I loved I loved the area. I love the lights. I love the soundtrack. I fell in love with all of the other clowns and the people. They have like that silly, crazy energy that most clown people have. Right. Like, it was so like, I was really nervous the first two nights, I think, especially opening night. But other than that, I was just having a really, a really good time. And I also like got to learn a bunch of new things that I could do out on streets. Now, um, I got to talk to you about something because something that was a staple of your character was your giant lollipop. Um, 
I need to know how that came around. Did you find that or did you make that and you just kind of rolled with it? How, how did that come around? Because that is honestly the staple of your character this season. It really was. Uh, I've had props before. Um, Cherry had the masquerade mask and I used it sometimes for like aesthetic reasons, but I would always like put it back. Um, but whack is funkus, my lollipop. <laughs> whack is funkus. All the time. Um, <laughs> and he was very... He was very spontaneous. Uh, so just like how me auditioning for Knots was very spontaneous, the whole character and the look itself was very like last second. Um, and like a day before we had to get everything approved by Tim, um, I was like, well, I want to make a prop just to have one, just in case I might want to bring it out. And I have to get it ready now because if I make it in the middle of season, I can't like bring it out. Right. Um so I just looked up on YouTube a tutorial on how to make a giant lollipop. So he's actually made out of, made out of like two poo noodles that I glued together and just nice. dumped a bunch of water on. Uh, and that's how he came to be. And then slowly over season, he like evolved into like his own entity. Um, Rabbit has like this habit of putting googly eyes on things, right? <laughs> so one day I walk backstage and I find out that my lollipop has googly eyes on him. So I'm like, this is this is cute. I'm going to keep them on. And then I added fangs. And so now he has a face. And then one, um, oh, one God. of people from knots, they were doing like content for, for knots is like social media pages, not right. scary. Far. So they pulled me aside and they were like, we want you to do this audio. And it was the, the infamous audio of like, <laughs> what do you back is funkus and that's where he got his name and then the final like turning point of when he really became his fullest self is when i had a, a whole bunch of like girls and they were like so hyped and i was so hyped and we were just screaming back and forth and then i commanded them to bow before the lollipop and i was like oh shit you just you just you just uh you just birthed something right there and then it and then it took off and now there's a candy cult and everybody like is trying to join it and it's amazing and i love it i've the always wanted call man I, you know what it was funny because the night we went and i first like if you first approached me about it i was like what the fuck are you talking about <laughs> and then i like that night i went home and i saw the video and i was like oh this makes a lot more sense i was like okay um because like you came up to me and a bunch of other clowns came up to me and were like you know bow before me and i was like wait what <laughs> like what? What am I bowing for? And uh, eventually, I think Sammy and I got inducted in, and uh, yeah, that was a lot of fun. I I, I will forever remember that because um, Carnival this year honestly was probably one of my favorite zones because we were there majority of the nights. We were spending most of our time there, um, mm -hmm. but it was just it was a lot of fun to see that come around and whatnot. Um, Another fun thing I remember going to see a couple nights was uh, you and a couple other of the uh, carnival uh, monsters going over to the stage area, having like a straight up dance party almost every single night. <laughs> I mean, the dance parties. Yes. <laughs> I mean, there's videos of it on Instagram and whatnot of you guys just dancing and, and just having a good time and all over social media and whatnot. How was I mean, when you think about it, you're getting paid to hype up a crowd and and, and just have a good time like. It must have been freaking awesome to do every single night. Oh, yeah. I, know. I love that. Um, I like that's why I like slider shows because they're like a little bit more performative, a little bit more character interaction. And you get to like talk to the guests instead of terrorize them. Right. Uh, and those those dance parties were like purely just fun, purely just talking to the guests and dancing with them. They were exhausting. <laughs> uh, we four times a night. Um, and so like, and you had to like really get hyped to hype the audience up. Cause sometimes they're a little nervous. Yeah. Uh, but they were still like really fun. And I was honored to, to be chosen to be able to like take a little break from scaring and go over and do that. Yeah. You were definitely honestly a, a, a big time fan favorite on carnival this year from a lot of guests. I saw a lot of videos of you throughout the <laughs> season on, on different people's Instagrams, on different people's social medias. Um, TikTok and stuff. You really um, were one of the the breakout, like I said, uh, monsters this season for that zone. I mean, you coming into a new environment and and working around that uh, really proves to you uh, the level of talent you can go from taking one character that you're used to at Queen and and designing a whole new character 
and a whole new personality for Carnival at Not Scary Farm. Um, mm-hmm. When it came time to creating the, uh, the, the character for um, Not Scary Farm, was there any uh, difficulties doing it or did you have something in mind already going into it or were you just kind of rolling with the flow? It was more like uh, rolling with the flow. Uh, like I said, I had no idea what my character even fully looked like until the day of opening night. Um, I was working on a bunch of other, I had gotten into like set work and doing like commercials and movies and stuff, our, all that jazz, like a month and a half before Haunt started. So I was so like involved in that. And then I was doing my own like videos and stuff with j And then I realized like, oh shit, Haunt is like in a week. So I ordered a bunch of sh- like stuff online. Uh, I put it together and it was just kind of that. And um, Lala Loopsy, she didn't get her name to like more mid season. Cause you know, you want, I wanted to get the name from them. I don't just want to like make it up myself. Yeah. All I know that she was like, she was a cannibal. There's like a little bit of a backstory, but like she, she makes people into candy like guests of the carnival into candy and then she'll sell it back to the guests. Um, I never knew that. (laughs) Now now I'm a little uneasy now thinking about it. It's like, it makes a lot of sense now. That's why you're starting a cult and everything. Exactly. I'm glad that it makes you uneasy. That's the whole point. You're like, you're like the cross of Leatherface and freaking Charles Manson meets the world of candy. (laughs) Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. This thing is, is too much. Give me one second. <laughs> My child needs to be put on timeout. Timeout time. Get out of here. Go. Go. This whole time she has been like gnawing my hand. <laughs> um Yeah, that's I mean that's what that's the mix that you're seeing right there though. You got you got the cannibal aspect, you got the cult aspect, and then you just got the candy aspect. Yeah. Sweet. Gotta make it a little sweet. But um as with Wackus Funkus, the character itself kind of evolved over season. Right. And I really liked that because it was like a process. Like you got to see it grow instead of it all happening at once. And it was like a collaboration of like rabbit with the eyes, um, like somebody else with the name, like, you know, all that. And then it just kind of grew into its own thing. And it was really cool. That's awesome. No, I, I really, uh, I really enjoyed uh, watching. Like I said, I would sit there for hours uh, watching all of you guys. I mean, and when I say all of you guys, I mean I got to meet a lot of new people off Carnival I've never met this season. Um, a lot of great returning faces, but I mm-hmm. bet it was a lot of fun for you because you got to uh, scare with a lot of your fellow queen people too. Uh, Mid season, I know a lot of them uh, came over to uh, to play in the carnival, and uh, not to mention you already had uh, starting with uh with jasper as well um who also another talent that uh it. out there you guys you guys kill it every time i i watch you guys do your thing and i'm excited to see what the future holds for you guys because uh whether queen comes back or whether you guys return to carnival whatever the case may be i mean it's always great to see you guys uh evolve and continue to uh add on to what you guys do Thank you. Yeah, it's 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 honestly so fun to watch people over the years just create something from the beginning and then evolve it over the years to make it something that will be remembered for for generations to come and mm-hmm. for people to talk about. Um, that being said, obviously we we don't know the state of the queen for next year, so. Uh, for you, it is not something that is on the table for next season. Like, do you want to return if, if, if queen is not available? Is it something that, you know, that's in the back of your mind? Are you still kind of, you don't know where that's going to be until maybe later next season. So, um, that's like the big, that's like the big question that I've been asked so many times Mm -hmm. by so many people. Um, I so I will say this if Queen doesn't come back next year, it's guaranteed that I go back to Knots without a doubt. Right. Knots, it's mm-hmm. sets, it's family, like everything about it, its energy charmed me uh, more than I knew. <laughs> like by the I like fell in love so hard, and then by the end of season, I was like, oh no. <laughs> uh, so now I'm at this point because like at the beginning of season, I was like, this is cool. Like every everyone's really nice. I'm having a good time. But like I'm for sure going to go back to Queen for multiple reasons. 
Um, but now, now that I've gone through the full season, um, I'm at a point where even if Queen does come back next year, I'm not sure if I would return. Um, so I'm just letting things kind of like settle and process, let things kind of flow however they're going to flow. Because like, I think that's the whole reason why I even ended up Nazis is because I just like no expectations, just kind of went for it and it turned into like a beautiful thing. Right. So I want to still keep that with next year's decision, but I am for sure if it comes down to it, I'm just going to go where my, my heart kind of feels like it needs to go. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it's, it's like, it, there's like nine months to figure it out. Oh, there's <laughs> plenty of time. Yeah. We got a whole year ahead of us and, and you have mm-hmm. plenty of time to uh, come down with a decision. I mean, whether that be early next season, early next year or, Literally the month before, I mean, you have plenty of time to, to make up uh, a decision for what's better for you in the long run. Um, mm-hmm. But no, I mean, wherever you go, we're going to support you no matter what. So it doesn't even, it wouldn't even matter where you went because <laughs> we'll still be there to, to see what you can do, um, mm-hmm. which is always a lot of fun. So Carnival, obviously known at Knott's for being probably one of the funniest scare zones uh, to ever <laughs> be in existence and that goes across a lot of haunts too um obviously i've i've seen things in the past but what are some of the funny experiences you had this season whether it be with guests or your fellow monsters oh my gosh um i mean there's constantly like weird little shenanigans happening all the time um and that's why that's why i like being a clown i like bank like being in the circus because like you could scare but you can also be goofy and like funny and it totally makes sense right but like, gosh, um, one of the things that we did there, uh, there was, there's a clown named Trombone and he learned the Oompa Loompa song and the short clowns in the zone and he led it and he played the Oompa Loompa song and then all of them behind him, like doing the Oompa Loompa dance. That was really, <laughs> I really, that, um, <laughs> also um, I played with Wackus Funkus and Kazoo because you always had like this fish. We played baseball. Um, <laughs> so I would like hit the fish. One time I was terrified. I hit it wrong and it went straight up in the air. And I was like, I swear to God, if this hits a guest right now, I'm running away. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that was that was fun. There's just there's constantly like just crazy, weird shenanigan things happening all the time in Carnival. And I love it. That's hilarious. I mean, I got a, I got a, I got a funny story that I got to witness from you. Sadly, I didn't catch on camera, but it was still hilarious. Mm-hmm. Um, there was one night I went by myself and I was chilling in Carnival uh, on the on one of the the benches, and um, I, I vividly re- or not vividly, I remember it like it was yesterday. Uh, you s- went in to scare this girl, and she you were backing her up into a planner, mm-hmm. and there was a rope. <laughs> And she fell back into the planner. I've never seen you like so humble afterwards that you were just like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. And then you like (laughs) helped her up and everything. Like it was one of the funniest things ever. Like I I remember just looking over at you. I'm like, did you really just apologize to her? Like I would have just walked away. I wasn't, I felt like I completely (laughs) character i was like oh shit she's stuck and she was still freaking out and i was like i gotta get her out and also had like the head of entertainment of knots was like literally right around the corner and saw the whole thing and i was like oh my god oh she was laughing her ass off she even looked at me (laughs) we're talking about pasta she looked right at me and she goes you should have filmed that and i was like yeah i know um there was actually so that happened right um and then later in the season So imagine that, right? But there were three girls and they were all holding hands. Same thing happened, but three of them fell back. Oh man. So, I mean, you're just, you're, you're known for just throwing people in planners then. I guess apparently I, my five foot little being is just too terrifying for the general population. I mean, (laughs) it's hilarious because, you know, you've done a lot of funny shit this season from getting a cult going to pushing people into planners and we can't forget that the TikTok that blew up towards the end of the season of you getting tossed in the air. Ah, that was for National Throw a Short Person Day. That was so much fun. They threw me like 
was great. I just, I've replayed that video so many times <laughs> and just hearing your scream is what is what's the funny part about it. Cause like, it's just like, it, it's like national short people day. And then it, you know, has the definition and everything of it. And all of a sudden we just hear this high pitched scream of you getting yeeted in the air and then just laughing after that. Like I, I've played it back so many times cause that scream just made me laugh so much. It was, uh, it was a good, it was a good time. You practiced like backstage and then we were like, wait, we got to do this out there. Yeah. And then we, and everybody was like, is that supposed to happen? And I'm just like, <laughs> corner, like laughing like a crazy person. I love Austin Throne. It's one of my favorite things about being short. <laughs> oh man. So uh, another great thing that I've been talking to a lot of carnival people about this season was uh, the fact that um, you being, I mean, there was a lot of first years out there that I've noticed that I've talked with so far. Um, and uh you guys uh and i don't know if it was because it's been just two years since haunts have been around and uh not to mention every monster this season gave so much so much to us like 110 percent um you guys won the golden haunt award for carney evil i mean how does that feel being on your first year and you guys won scare zone of the year feels so good we i were like so our, our lead josh he was really pushing for it he was really encouraging us like you guys got this you guys need to be recognized for like all your hard work and all of that and i found out that last year in terms of like um award like placements i'm pretty sure carnival got like last place right um, so this year to like come back and kick ass and also i found out that like carnival hasn't gotten the the cup in a decade exactly Oof. so to like be a part of that and to be able to get it it just it felt so good it was so cool and like if i do come back to carnival i want us to keep it like i want to keep proving that like we are a goofy scare zone but we are also a scare zone that will do our job and like kick ass and bring people into knots and all of that jazz so it was it was so cool and it was like such like an intense thing too because we were neck and neck we won we won over going 20s i think by just one point so like we were neck and neck and we were waiting that last night like at, at 11 or something for that call to hit and i remember hearing the call like somebody ran the streets and said we won the cup and then we all like ran through the zone and we're screaming we won the cup and then we had a little party afterwards it was great seems like uh it's like freaking uh it's like soccer when you win the world cup man it's just going nuts about it <laughs> <laughs> oh man now that's great i mean and were you were you part of the in invasion? And I know it didn't happen that night. It happened a few nights before the invasion of Goring twenties. Were you part of that? I mean, how, how was that from your perspective? Um, well, because I'm small, uh, it was a little scary. <laughs> so much happening. I thought I was going to stand over, but, um, it was really funny because I did see when Goring twenties originally, like, I guess a few of them came into our zone and were like, Ooh, blah, and then like they stabbed boots and like killed him or whatever. So remember him like looking over and being like, Ashley, grab the cup, our, our other lead, Ashley. So like we go grab the cup and like, I guess it was supposed to be only a few of us, but like everyone saw and got super hyped and like with our horns and our noise maker and like all the squeaky toys, like we just mobbed. And <laughs> And then, like, the it was so the Goring 20s people, they're so great because, like, they like got up in arms and they tried fighting us, and it was the most intense five minutes of my life. I gotta see if there's any footage of that on there because I've only heard stories, but I, I gotta see some stuff because that just sounds like a fun time. I'm so pissed off that I wasn't there to catch that on camera, but there's, uh, there's footage you can find it. <laughs> yeah, I gotta, I gotta do some, I gotta do some deep diving into that, but I mean, that's hilarious that uh, there was a little all out war between zones. I mean, I mean, your zone, from what I've been told, is supposed to take place in the 50s. So y'all motherfuckers got in a DeLorean, went 88, and went back to the 20s. Mm -hmm. That's hilarious. No, that's <laughs> great. I mean, and that, and that, in my eyes, is what's make, what makes Haunt fun. I mean, when you have two zones that make a, a magical moment like that, and if you're in the park lucky enough to see it, it's something, as a guest, that you're going to remember for some time, whether you only go once or if you're a diehard fan and go many times it's something that you're going to remember regardless i mean it's it's I, something that people are going to talk about and go oh remember that time when the clowns and and the, the people from the 20s had like a fight you know what i mean like <laughs> how often do you get to hear things about that you know what i mean 
yeah it, it's those little things where you kind of cross the line but like be, it, because it's that it's like really cool you know right so uh, another was, one of the things that i really liked that was probably the cutest thing i've ever seen you do is you had a little kind of dance that you did every now and then where you kind of like just shook around and stuff it was by far one of the the, the cutest things i've ever seen you do and i was just like okay with on the move i really loved the the soundtrack that they had like i really liked dancing with it so if i ever if i ever like got bored or needed to get back <laughs> low of things i would just be like well it's time to dance it's time to dance yeah oh man and i and from what i'm told you still listen to that soundtrack to this day you can't let it go <laughs> i love it most everyone's like i hate that I, I we had to listen to it all throughout season cherry i don't know why you like it but i <laughs> I'm obsessed. I have obsession problems. It's fine. It's okay. No, I, I, I was listening to Welcome to the Carnival the other day. It popped up on my Spotify, and I was just like, I miss it. I want to go back. I miss it. miss it, too. Oh, man. Hard. Hard. <laughs> so um, this year you also were fortunate enough to get um, uh, the makeup treatment as well. Um, yeah. Talk to us about year one uh la la loopsie and uh what i mean how much of that did you have to create yourself like was it was it something that was kind of more given to you by knots or did you have freedom to really have say so in what you wanted to look like like how did that really go so um with cherry so that was like a big so blah, 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 blah. um <laughs> i went to knots and it, in a way it was almost like you know, like when you go to a different country and they have different mannerisms or different things that you don't know about. Right. Um, you're not trying to like, it, uh, it's just, it's just like different. It's like very different. And that was a very big difference from queen to not. It's like a queen. It's very rare to be put into a mask. I mean, right. It's very character specific. Everybody gets makeup at queen. Um, at knots, it's much more selective. And knots uses the masks a lot more than queen does. Um, so with queen, like that's it. I also had like full creative freedom over my costume as long as it got approved and I created a specific makeup look for her. Um, but with Lala Loopsy, it was very much like work with what they gave me. Um, so most nights, um, my makeup artist, Jamie kind of just did whatever she felt like it was different every night, but like she just did like whatever she wanted to do it came out amazing every single night and as long as it was within the parameters of what tim wanted that's just kind of how it was and then towards the end of season um is when i started being like what about having like a curly smiley face or a heart over my eye and there was this like one look it's like where i have a spiral and a heart and like um a smile and that was one that like going back and forth with her we kind of like created that little look together um but in general, it was just kind of different every night. And in a way, it was kind of refreshing because I didn't know what I was going to look like. So I could have some say in it if I wanted to. And if your makeup artist wants to work with you, they can. Yeah. But it's kind of case to case. Also, because I'm a clown, there's a lot more like freedom with that. So I think some characters probably have like this needs to look like this every night because this is what you are. A clown can be anything, you know? Right. Um. So going in from year one to year two, do you kind of have any ideas of um, what you want to, how you want to take the character in a different approach if, if you do decide to come back to uh, Knots? Has that ever run your mind already uh, at, after season? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I mean, you don't have to share what those ideas are, but you do have ideas, you know, I mean, yeah. just to go for year two. To put it simply, um, I kind of in a way... If I did come to back, if I did come back to knots, I might um, try to like have maybe some specific staples within the makeup that are consistent every night. Right. If my art wanting to work with it, and I want to combine Cherry and Lala Loopsy and kind of put their looks together as much as I can, um, and whatever that looks like in the future will look like it. But like I've always very much liked fluid movement movement like when i'm out there on streets so i thought of a ballerina you know and i want to like maybe see if i can put those two things together so we'll see how that looks there's a lot to flush out but that's the that's the very like general goal of it 
Right. And and I know because uh, I've gotten to see you guys practice over the summer and whatnot, uh, you, you can slide. You have the ability to slide. Is that something you also want to incorporate in the character next season or are you – Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. She's like, I want to get back on the pads, man. I was lucky enough to um, be able to slide some nights at knots. You know, the apprentice thing where you can slide um, Thursdays a certain amount of time and Sundays a certain amount of time. There was one night where we were allowed to slide, I think, like on a Friday night. We were doing death waves like that. I didn't even that was my first time doing those things. Those were intense. <laughs> but, I, um, but yeah, no, I absolutely want to be a slider again um i like having a bunch of like different things to do when i'm out there because one of the things that like i've personally experienced that makes haunt hard because you get tired at a certain point right and like it's it's still fun but like you might be super like the exhaustion is really intense especially for me because i go really fast and i'm wearing a corset so Mm -hmm. it's like (sighs) but by having like the option to slide or use back as bunkus or like all these little things I can just, I can keep it different and new moment to moment and having sliding as an option would be really fun to like add out there. Right. No, I, I completely agree. Like I said, I've seen you slide. I know you have the ability to do it and you were very, very good at it. So I cannot wait to see, uh, if if Lala Loopsy returns that you, you bring that aspect out there. Cause, um, I mean, I think even without it this season, you did a phenomenal job. I mean, you 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 worked with what you had, and you really made the most out of it, which, um, you know, I, I've always said sliding is a great uh, technique and tool to uh, use w- in your ability to use it. Um, but if you can go out there and, and scare without it, I mean, you automatically are you're, – you're trying to do what's best to work with what you have, and – it really shows of how hard you're trying to uh, to earn your to earn your spot in, in a different place. Yeah, I um, I actually was really I was like sad that there was that first year rule, but I was really I'm really grateful in a way that like I couldn't because of that. Like I focused on a lot of different like a lot of different things, like that weird spinny thing that I do. Yeah, spunkus. Like I'm sure that if I was focusing more on my sliding that may have never come up or like there was one night where my cast lead was like I want to see you without it and I was like no problem and then like again like I just moved totally different without Wackus Bunkus so like having like putting in things and then getting rid of them like you have to mold to whatever that is and when you in the when you're in the process of like figuring out how to do it that way is when you discover certain things that work and to me that is one of the funnest things of scare acting is like oh shit this works this is so much fun now i'm gonna see if i can expand on it yeah i mean no like i said this season even without it i mean you worked with what you had and it and it came out fantastic like i said you were one of the popular ones in carnival this year a lot of people noticed you a lot of people came up to you and uh it was funny watching a lot of kids try to talk with you and it was just it was it was by far some of the funniest things i remember because I would look over and kids wanted selfies with you. They wanted to like really talk with you and like have long conversations with them. But I also like it too. And I know a lot of haunts, like, you know, we always advocate, like, don't bring your kids if you can't handle it and whatnot. But there was nights where I would see you interact with little kids. And it was one of the freaking coolest (laughs) moments ever. Cause you weren't like trying to scare them, but you were trying to be like friendly with them and try to, you know, have a good time with them and kind of break them into that world, showing them that, it's not all about being scared. It's also all about having a fun time and just making moments like that. Yeah. I love the, I love the kids. I love like, um, I would like scare them, but mildly I like interacting with them more. Um, sometimes I would have like dance with them. I would like have them follow my little dance moves. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's really funny though. Cause like I was trying to be like, there was this little girl and her dad was holding her and she was terrified like she was not having a good time and i saw this and i like if they're crying sometimes i'll try to like calm them down um and be like it's fine it's okay and if i can get a laugh out of them that's good sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but i went up to her and i was like i offered her wackus bunkus i was like you want some candy and she immediately turned away and screamed even louder and i went oh and then the oh. whole crap, and i ran away oh <laughs> Being rejected by a child is the is the harshest rejection out of all. <laughs> I like how your reaction was just oh, and then just rock away. <laughs> exactly. Oh man! They were like, oh no. <laughs> 
Oh, man. That's hilarious. Uh, we got to talk about it, too, man. Wackus Bunkus is, like, got destroyed the final night you worked. I mean, that hurt me, man. I can imagine how much it hurt the people, but uh, what was the, the process of that? I know you were every – all season you were holding together that thing with electrical tape and glue and whatnot, but – what was what was finally like, ah, screw it. It's the last night. I got to get rid of it. Well, actually, so he broke once before during season. Um, what ends up happening is like, because I hit it at the ground so much, yeah. the self starts to get weak. And then if I hit it hard enough, it'll bend right in the center. And I can feel it, like I know if I hit it one more time, it's going to snap. Right. And it's super easy to replace. I just I just pop pop the broken one out and then and then duct tape back in the new one but um i just i felt it and i was like okay well i'll make a show out of it and i did the whole thing went in front of a group of people and went ha ah! and broke it <laughs> they were like oh my god <laughs> it was a set did you at least have a proper burial for him um I didn't give him a burial because that's just the thing he does. He just casually dies and comes back to life whenever he feels like it. So it's okay. I think he, next year we got to, uh, we'll set up a little, like a, a little Viking funeral right there on the boardwalk pier in the water. <laughs> we'll get some flaming arrows. We'll like shoot at it and we'll yeah, yeah, yeah. ceremony, you know, there's some water next to carnival. I'm sure that would work out. Yeah, people. exactly. Right there, right off the pier, just kind of have a little nice Viking burial for it and we'll see what goes down. Um, mm -hmm. No, I'm excited to see uh, where people go. I mean, I'm already seeing a lot of people that want to return for next season and um, have bigger and better ideas for next season. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's it's good to see that uh, for you, it's on the table still. It's not uh, there, there's no option where it's not on the table. So it's good to see that it's still there. Um, being at Knott's uh, Carnival, a, a fantastic zone. Would there be anywhere else uh, that you would eventually love to? have a have a chance to play in one season yes um i will say uh i'm a clown circusy person at heart so it would take me a while to get bored of carnival i think but if i were at, to ever like explore a different zone or area um ghost town seems pretty cool uh personally i still like carny like the the carnival look more than the ghost town look but playing in the fog seems super fun everybody in that zone is like so nice um and welcoming and you know there's i think there's some part in a lot of like scare actors hearts where it's like you know when you when you go through the documentaries and stuff there's a lot of them where it's like this is where it started this is the big place and like in a way as a scare actor you kind of like want to be a part of that you know yeah. so there's that um, and then the other place is Goring 20s because I am a sucker for the 20s aesthetic. I would love to be a flapper girl and like get a little bit more into swing dancing and do all of that. That would be really fun. Um, I know a couple of carnival people that would not like that answer that you just said. No. <laughs> no, but Goring 20s, I could, I, Goring 20s in Ghost Town, like I could see you doing something creepy in Ghost Town. And I could see you having. I could see you creating something I iconic in Goring 20s. Yeah, it's it it seems like a really fun zone to be in and like I love the music and the dancers all the time and yeah. they just they also like they really they really killed it this season. I heard some of the stories that like they did and I was like, "Wow, you guys Are you uh now would you go full blown <clears throat> accent with Goring 20s like, "Hey, we got ourselves a wise guy here." Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> You're going as an actress, I got to go full method like exactly you know going to like breaking the floor we're not you know we're going full method we're talking like that backstage and i won't stop talking like that until i leave that place mm -hmm. <laughs> that's hilarious no i love that that's awesome yeah gotta give i i give 100 percent into like almost everything i do which is very exhausting but i mean <laughs> good results so it's worth it yeah um yeah no that's cool what about forsaken or hollow would you ever play over there for a season um, I'm not necessarily super intrigued by those zones. Nothing against those zones. Just for me, it's not really something that I, I would be interested. I'm not like totally against it. Um, but like, I, I have my favorites. So that's just kind of like where it is right now. Um, I, when I went as a guest, I got to walk through both of those zones and they were really cool. 
Um, I really enjoy the costumes that they have in um, Forsaken Lake, but like, I just like, I just like the other areas for, yeah, yeah I think, and I think I would fit better in them because I'm, um, I like to, I like to be more than like creepy. I like to be a little bit more showy, a little bit more interact, like character, funny stuff. Right. Um, and so that's why I think I might fit better into the other areas, the other zones. Right. No, I hundred percent feel you. I mean, I can, I can definitely see you in Goring twenties. I can, um, I could see a character with that add on to that, uh, amazing start that they had. And I can't wait to see that, that zone grow even more and, and more of oh, a story yeah. and whatnot. I think there's a lot of room for it to grow, but they had a strong season nonetheless to, uh, to start it really? off with. Um, yeah. And of course, ghost town. I mean, that's the zone that really, that's the zone of all zones in the haunt world. It really, I mean, I think without what was done on ghost town over the, the last, you know, couple of decades you know it's 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 weird to think that 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 zone is really the one that spawned a generation of things and and continues to uh keep the uh the freaking um what's the word i'm looking for keep it i how iconic as possible because you know you look at a zone like this and you you look at all the people that have come out of it and me and you know a lot of people that have worked there over the years and and continue mm -hmm. to uh tell stories about it and whatnot um, but then you look at other haunts that spawned in SoCal, that spawned in, you know, all over the country, all over the world. And a lot of it has to do with the OG, not Scary Farm. I was actually, so um, sometimes people from like different areas, they'll message me and they'll be like, um, look at this, like I'm learning how to sliding and all this stuff. And these might not necessarily be people I've ever talked to before, but like, you know, maybe they're asking for tips or just like to show me. And literally, literally right before I got on this call, I, this guy was sending me message messages from Denmark being like, or the Netherlands, so something somewhere in Europe. And he was like, I'm the first slider in this area. Isn't that so cool? I'm like, yeah. And then he was being like, I'm really inspired by the sliders in ghost town. And I was like, they're amazing sliders. And like, literally there are people in different parts of the world that are taking inspiration from that zone ghost town. And it's, it's really cool that it's like inspiring people to grow things themselves. Yeah, man. I mean, 2019, I had heard that it made it out to Japan which is Real. nuts. It's out in Japan. Easy. Yeah, it's made it out to Japan, and a lot of people that were in connect to people who were out there were saying the same thing that they saw the videos on YouTube from Ghost Town um, yeah. or just anything at Knott's, you know what I mean? And so we, it's made it out to Japan. Um, you're saying it's making it out in the, in the greater Europe area. So, I mean, that is that is impressive to see. I mean, I think it's out there in Germany too. Like, I mean, it's 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 starting to grow. I mean, obviously, SoCal is the the birthplace of it, and so it's going to be very heavy out here. It's it's pretty common and normal out here. Um, oh yeah. Where for us, when we when we see it and stuff, like it's cool to watch, but it's not like anything new to us. Like we know what it is, and you know we know the the basics and whatnot of it. And then you start going to other states, and, you know, it's pretty common in the United States, too. I mean, there's some states that probably don't do it and are still trying to develop and learn it. But um, for most states, a lot of a lot of haunts and the independent haunts and whatnot do it. And when you got people like John Cook going all over the world with, uh, you know, 13th floor, or what is it, 13th, uh, yeah, 13th, 13th floor entertainment. Um, when he's going over the world designing all these things, I mean, the guy, you know, he used to slide back in the day, too, so... You know, he's probably he probably tells people stories, but you know, you go out to like Florida and stuff. They got slider teams out there, um, other different haunts in the United States. But for it to finally get overseas to like Germany, Japan, um, the Netherlands, like it's that's nuts. So cool, and that's like one of the things I remember coming home after the like the last night of haunt, <clears throat> and like I was finally alone by myself. I like went outside and like got my dog. It was like three in the morning. And I sat there and I was like, it would be really cool. I don't know like how it would happen, um, but it would be really cool if like haunt itself just became like a mainstream thing. And it's hard because it's seasonal, right? So it's right. like, it's for it to fall off here and there. But I feel like if 
big enough people who had big enough voices really started yelling about it, it would be cool where it's like, yeah, like it's that time of year. Like even normal people are like, yeah, I have like this favorite character. I want to go see it. This is a normal part of my Halloween experience is to go to an attraction and interact with these like scare actors. Like that to me would be so cool. And I feel like it's a slow process, but it's obviously happening because it's getting to other parts of the world. And like, I hope that that continues. I hope that that enthusiasm continues to grow. Um, and it just turns into like its own thing that people enjoy, you know? That, I think that's another a big staple of what we do here on this channel is we are trying to normalize it and, and really uh, showcase it more. And this yeah. is why specifically why we do this month, because we want to showcase the people behind the scenes, behind the makeup and and the people who are people and whatnot. And we want to showcase everything that you guys do talent wise and maybe people who have never heard of this before or people that want to get more into it. You know, people that are just fans like us that want to know more about things like it's, it's a way for them to watch these podcasts and just kind of learn and and go from there. Um, and it's, it's been a pleasure. I, I am extremely thankful every day for, um, all the people we've gotten to meet over this, this show. And, um, I, I love doing this every season because it's a way for me to reconnect with, uh, from, from old friends that we've met in the past or from new people we've never met and we want to talk to. And we've gotten to do that already a couple times this season, um, but no, I, I am genuinely uh, a supporter of normalizing this and making it, I, I would love to see it more year round. Um, even if it was more kind of like, okay, we just did an October haunt, let's take November off and we'll do a December haunt. And then we'll take like January off, we'll do a fucking Valentine's Day haunt. You know what I mean? Like maybe bi-monthly we have something different where it keeps it up and it keeps it like seasonal with per holiday. You know I mean? I'm, I, I would love to see something year round. I mean, it would that would Really cool, yeah. Happier, yeah. So, so you don't see those seasons of post haunt depression because my god, is it hitting me hard right now? <laughs> right, no, I completely feel you. Um, but I have to say, Cherry, it's been an amazing, amazing season for you to to just watch you uh, for the first time actually ever to really pay attention to who you are because I may have seen you at Queen, I just I didn't know who you were. Uh, when I went in 2019, and then we, you know, we we did finally talk in 20 in, in the beginning of 2021 about it, and now to actually get to see it in person, um, it, it's been an absolute pleasure to to watch you work and to to watch you evolve, and I can't wait to see what year two has to bring for you. If you go back to Knots or if Queen returns, I I can't wait to see what what's next for you. So. Thank you. I can't wait to see what happens either. This season was such a pleasant surprise. I had, I literally was going into it as like, yeah, I can't go another year without screaming at people and it being socially acceptable and getting a paycheck for it. So I'm just going to do this for now. And then it turned it to one of the most meaningful experiences that I've ever had. And it was like, I had no idea that such like a fly of the moment decision would turn into what it did. So I'm yeah. excited too, because it was so, this year was so cool. Yeah, so um, for those uh, who want to continue following you, uh, Instagram, what are you looking at at Instagram? I mean, I know you do a lot of various things over the year with cosplays and whatnot. So where can they find you on Instagram if they want to continue to support and follow? If you would like to support and follow me, uh, my Instagram and my TikTok are goddess.of.galaxies. Uh, and I, I do hunt stuff. I do cosplay stuff. I'm trying to get more into fire stuff again. And I also really want to do silks and hoop, but that's, that's other plans for me. But yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that, that's, those are the things, uh, that's what I do over there. It's just like wild random things. There's, I have no idea what's happening. <laughs> it's all just a, a, a bunch of chaos put into one. That's, that's enjoyable to, to look at and watch. You know what I mean? That's all it is. That's all you got to say. Um, <laughs> No, it, it's a, it's she's got a really good page. Go follow her. She does uh, a really great cosplays. Works with some of the best uh, photographers and uh, videographers out there. And uh, oh. I have the pleasure of calling her my friend. So that's a lot of fun. Um, so, Cherry, I cannot wait to see what happens with you next season. Whether you end up back at the Queen if it does happen, or if you end up back at Knots, or if you go completely somewhere different this season. I mean, wherever you may end up. I mean. Uh, except if you go to 17th door i'm sorry i can't i can't do that one that i, I 
understandable. <laughs> I, I watched a whole fucking walkthrough of it last night, and I was just in complete shock. But I respect the fuck out of that haunt for what they story tell and whatnot. And I, I enjoy know. the energy as well. I need that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but whatever you do next season, we'll support you. We'll, we'll be there with right there with you. So, um, we cannot wait to see what happens. Uh, we hope you had a, a wonderful season. I know a lot of people enjoyed watching you this season. A lot of people enjoyed interacting with you this season. And also a lot of people enjoyed working with you this season. Um, with that being said, uh, go ahead and follow her on Instagram and her TikTok. Go show her some support. Um, if you haven't done so already and yeah, and we just want to, again, thank you for putting on a great fucking show this season. This was a an emotional one for a lot of people because this was a uh, comeback after two years. And uh, we just appreciate all the hard work and, and dedication that you put into not only your character, but to bringing the story alive. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for doing these podcasts and trying to make it normal. As we, that's what, that's the goal, I think. So we really need that. We need more interviews. We need our, more people talking about it. So thank you. Oh. And coming as many times as you did. Every time that I was like, oh, my God, my friend's here. <laughs> oh, man. That, you know, it's funny. And I'll end it with this. I mean, one of the things that I like more than anything, I love getting um, noticed by fans. It's a lot of fun to interact with people and get to meet new people. But when I get noticed by a monster, I'm really the fangirl here because I'm like, oh, dang. It's like that. I don't know if you've ever. There's this movie that I used to watch. It's a Christmas movie called Jingle All the Way with Arnold Schwarzenegger. And there's one scene where the kid he gets called by like the superhero and it's one of those moments where I'm just like, they know my name and just, I lose my <laughs> shit. So, uh, it's one of those things where I love getting noticed by monsters cause it just genuinely makes us happy and knows that what we're doing, what we're trying to do with these podcasts, uh, it's working. So that's all we care about. But with all that being said, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed today's podcast. If you guys did, uh, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel with that bell notification be aware every time we put up a new video. Uh, follow us on Instagram at the Knights of Horror and on Twitter at Knights of Horror. And with all that being said, uh, make sure you tell a loved one that you love them because you never yeah. know when it might be the end. You never know. Tomorrow might be your last day. Today it even might be your last day. So make sure you tell your loved ones you love them. It's been Peace quality. and love. Um, yeah. Well, yep. That's all we advocate here. And mm -hmm. uh, we will see you guys in the next podcast. Goodbye.